everyone, this is Georgia with Georgia's Crafty Creations, and today I'm bringing you another project as part of May May Made It's Design Team. And I thought we'd do today is a simple card for the fall that you can use as a thank you card or if you have a fall birthday. I left the inside of this one blank so that you can make it for whatever you want. But it says, in everything give thanks. And if you're going to somebody's house for Thanksgiving, you want a hostess gift to take with this, would you be a nice little card to add on to it? And we're going to be making two cards today. And for my background mat, I just used different colors that reminded me of fall. So let's get started. The stamp set we're going to use today is from May May Made It. It's the Blessing Stamp Set. We're going to be using the three leaves, the In Everything, and the Give Thanks stamps. Now I don't know about you, but when I'm using smaller stamps and I have several out, I tend to lose them or misplace them or they get stuck on paper that I'm going to throw away or paper scraps. So what I've recently started doing is I will take a clear stamp block and I'll just put all my stamps I'm going to use for a project onto that block and that way they're always handy and I always know where they're at. Now you're also going to need for your card base a sheet of 8.5 by 11 card stock and I cut it in half horizontally and then I scored it at four and a quarter and you're going to get two A2 size cards out of this. And this is almost kind of like a real pale green but you could use any color for the base you like. For my mats I use paper from a shimmer card stock stack. It's from DCWV, and I, like I said, I just picked colors that reminded me of fall. The two we're going to make today are going to use yellow, and one's going to use kind of a pumpkin color. Now your mats, you're going to need to cut those, you'll need two of them, at 4 and 1 8 by 5 and 3 8 Now the last piece you're going to need is a square <coughs> cut at 4 inches and then cut diagonally. Now, ideally, a 6x6 six six paper pack would be wonderful for this, but I could not find one that I really like for this project. So I found this stack that I had in my stash. It's Spice Cider from DCWV. Now, I'm not really a big scrapbooker. It's on my list of things I want to do. So I found two pages <coughs> that had paper that I liked on it. I really like the words because it has stuff about fruit and recipes which I thought was nice for the fall and I'm going to show you how I did my cards and cut them. You're going to want to cut a four inch square from each piece of this. So I'm going to grab my handy Cricut cutting mat and my first piece I actually want up in here. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut Four in, well, actually, I'm going to do about four and a half because I want to cut this top piece off also. And I'm just going to cut that off. And then I'll save this other piece for another card that I want a different kind of background. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to cut four inches. On this side. And then I'm going to turn it this way and we're going to cut four inches on that one too. And there's our first square. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the green paper. I'm going to first, I think with this one we're going to cut this top piece off first. Because I want to keep my sunflower intact. And I'm going to take and I'm going to cut a four inch strip vertically. I'm going to set that piece aside. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take and I'm going to cut a four inch square up from the top. Okay, then the next thing I'm going to do to get my diagonals, I'm just going to take and lift my cutter and I'm going to put each point of my square in the line to be cut. I'm going to take my cutter about midway because May May showed a tip this week 
where she just set the blade in and cut and it keeps you from wrinkling the edges or sometimes it just doesn't cut well for me and that I have learned just in a couple days that works really really nice and we're going to do that with our other square again I'm going to set it down in and cut and that's all we're going to need to cut so put that away Okay, the next step we're going to do is our stamping. So I'm going to grab my Misty and grab my stamps. And again, I have all my stamps on one block. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stamp the upper corner, left-hand corner of this card. Now we're going to have one piece in the green, and then I'm going to have one of these pieces. We're going to stamp both upper pieces, and then we're going to stamp the lower pieces. So for the upper piece, you want to have the In Everything stamp, and you're just going to line it up wherever you want it. And then you're going to take the three small stamps. Now remember, leaves, when they're falling, fall all which ways. So just put these however you want your leaves to fall. This is your world, so you do what you want to do. And we'll put one up here at the top. Also, also make sure you have the stamp side down because I have a tendency to lay these on here with my stamp upwards and then when I go to stamp, they're wrong. So get that one fixed. And then bring that one in a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now on the green paper that I'm using, I'm going to use from Tim Holtz Distress Ink, I'm going to use the Spiced Marmalade. And I'm also going to emboss it with clear embossing powder. That just makes the color pop out a little more from the page. And I really like that look. So what I'm going to do is put my embossing powder on after I stamp, but then save all my embossing to do at one time. So we're going to press that down, and that looks good. Bring my tray over. And I didn't worry about my embossing buddy, because honestly, if I get extra embossing powder and there's a little sparkle somewhere else, it's clear, I'm okay with it. Now the other option you could do if you don't want to use clear embossing powder, you could stamp using the clear embossing ink and then use colored embossing powder to make your color. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe my stamps off because I want to do the other piece next. And we're going to use Tim Holtz again. We're going to use the peeled paint ink. And I'm just going to take, put my top corner in, grab my ink. ink up my stamps and that one needs just a little bit more especially on the words we're going to ink that up one more time that's better Pull my embossing powder over. And that one looks good. So now we're going to switch to our lower corners. And I'm going to go ahead, I just have to remember that this is my lower corner and stamp my words the right direction. And go ahead and take the in everything off. And on this one, you're going to want the give thanks. And we're going to put it more at the lower corner. That looks good. And I want to wipe the paint or ink off my stamps again. Because we're going to use the same leaves on this. And what I do is I try to place them in a different position than I did at the top. And 
We'll do that one that way. And we'll do this one in the middle this time. And again, on this, I'm going to use the orange or spiced marmalade on the green. And that looks pretty good, but I think I'm going to give that one more. Just a light. Much better. Again, I'm going to pull my embossing powder over. Looks good. And we have one more. So we're just bring that, put it down. Clean the stamps again. I think I'm going to take a paper towel and just get a little bit of the wet off of them. And we're going to switch to our peeled paint ink again. And that looked like it shifted a little bit, so I'm going to straighten that one up a little bit. That looks better. And that one looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and set my Misty aside and I'll clean my stamps off when I'm done. So go ahead and peel my embossing powder one last time. There we go. And I'll grab my heat gun and we'll get these embossed. And I let my heat gun heat just a second before I start embossing. Okay, so we're going to do both our cards at the same time. So I'm going to grab two of my mats. One in the yellow and one in the light pumpkin color. And I'm going to just use Art Glitter Glue to put these on. It's real quick and easy and you get a second to set it where you want it. And you just need a thin line. You don't need a lot. And this is going to be my top corner. So I'm just going to set this down. And I made this so it would have a very small border. I didn't want a large border around this one. So I'm going to get that where I want it. That looks good. Wipe that little bit of glue off my card. Okay, then we'll take the bottom. Turn around, set it down. Get that one set where we want it. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and take my paper towel and just kind of press it down a little bit. Just to make sure my glue gets where I want it. And then we're going to do this one. around with different shapes 
don't be afraid to just try something you don't normally do. Cut different patterns. Cut different shapes. Cut a square and cut it in half or cut it in four pieces. Same thing with the circle. Split them up and see what you can come up with. And the last thing before we put our card totally together, I'm going to grab some fall ribbon. And I don't have a lot of this left, so I'm just going to split it in half. But you can use whatever color ribbon you want. If you want to stamp the background with some of the leaves, you could do that. If you want to make some of these little leaves and cut them out and pop them up down the middle, you could do that. Now for my ribbon, I like to use double-sided tape because I just, I like it to stay where I want it. So I'm going to grab some double-sided tape. I'm going to put a piece down each ribbon. I'm a person, when I put a card together, I want it to stay together. I don't want it coming apart. That one on. And we're done with that. I'm just going to mush this down to make sure it's on there good. Pull that off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and just place it right down the center of my card. Or the center of that diagonal. There we go. And then we'll flip the card over and just fold the ribbon over. If you have too much ribbon hanging off the end, just trim it off. That one actually did pretty good. So there's one topper. Same thing on this one. Place it right down the middle. Another option, if you want it, you could put a ribbon at either part of your triangles there. I flip that one over. And flip that one over. Now we're ready to assemble our cards. So I'm going to grab my card bases. I already have one folded. I'm going to fold the other. And I'm just going to use my nail to press it down. I'm going to make sure I have them the right direction I want them. And same thing, we're just going to use art glitter glue. The only thing I do is I'll put an extra drop like right on my ribbon just to make sure that ribbon holds and it doesn't go anywhere. Now we'll put a little in the middle too just to give it a little extra. And we're going to flip that over. And once again, this card I made with a very small border. I just didn't want a big border on this one. Although that one looks like I cut it a little short up and down, but we're okay. We're going with it. So there's our first card. I'm going to go ahead and put my inside mat in. Do the same thing, just a thin line of glue. And pop it in there. And then you can put whatever sentiment you want on the inside. Birthday, thank you, thinking of you, get well. There's that one complete.
So there you have it. Quick and easy thank yous for the fall. Simple. They're flat, so they should mail very well. Now the last thing I did, I did take some of the green paper and I made my own envelopes. Um, May May has a video using the 123 punch board. I'll link below. That will show you how to make the envelopes. And the last thing I did was once I got my envelopes done, I just stamped three leaves and embossed it just to decorate the envelope a little bit. Well, I hope you like this project. Make it. If you do, share it over on May, May Made It on Facebook or on George's Crafty Creations. Also, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up below. Like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, everybody. Happy crafting!